I've heard several times now the argument, same genes, same designer. Well, it's not just that DNA is similar in different organisms. It's the pattern of similarity that supports common descent, a nested hierarchy. So using the same genes, same designer argument, one might ask, are reptiles made by a slightly different designer than humans and chimps? Amphibians by a slightly more different designer? Fish even more different? Starfish? There's a pattern of relationships of DNA that matches exactly with the branching pattern expected from common descent. A common young earth creationist response to this is that the similarity of genes corresponds with the similarity of organisms themselves. Despite not accounting for the pattern of a nested hierarchy, this would be a good argument except that all genes follow the same pattern despite some being non-functional. Some young earth creationists will argue that there are no non-functional genes. It is true that as we dig into genomes we find functions for some DNA that was thought to be non-functional. However, if all genes were functional, then mutations would always have an effect, which can't be true. Mutations occur each generation, and most of these have no observable effect. Geneticists have removed large segments of DNA from eggs in a variety of organisms with no observable effect, and have exchanged divergent copies of genes from different organisms that still perform the same function. So, I think the most convincing single argument for common descent comes from examining the pattern of genes that are demonstrably neutral. I've seen some good YouTube videos on ERV sequences. These sequences are inserted into a genome in a largely random way, and should not perfectly match the tree of life as they do. The probability of these sequences independently being inserted by viruses in the exact same places so that the number of shared ERV sequences matches the pattern of the tree of life, and having the expected amount of mutational buildup on those genes? For that to happen without common descent is so remote as to be impossible for all practical purposes. For links to some good ERV videos, look to the box on the right. Now, I haven't yet seen one on the L-gulonolactone oxidase pseudogene, try saying that ten times fast, also known as GULOP, which reinforces the ERV evidence and all the rest of it. That is the topic of this video. L-gulonolactone oxidase is an enzyme that catalyzes a step in the set of reactions that makes vitamin C. So far, every animal that we've examined has a copy of the gene that codes for this enzyme. However, in all animals that are susceptible to scurvy because they don't make their own vitamin C, this gene is mutated in such a way that it no longer makes the enzyme. So we have observed a direct cause and effect relationship between the lack of certain mutations in the gene and the production of vitamin C. Now if God separately created every kind, then each kind that has a non-functional version of the gene would have had to lose this function at some point after the fall of Adam and Eve. Before that point, each animal should be perfect as God first made them, since an omnipotent being that wants us to believe he separately created all life would have no logical reason for placing a mutated non-functional version of a gene in his perfect creation in the beginning just for biologists to find later. However, if the common descent is true, then the non-functional version of the gene should show a pattern of inheritance in all the descendants of a particular common ancestor. So let's set this up as a scientific hypothesis test and reject the hypothesis that fails and accept the one that passes. Hypothesis 1. Each kind of animal was created separately and humans are a separate kind from apes or monkeys. A prediction for hypothesis 1. Gulop should follow a pattern of independent origin with each, within each kind for any mutations that disable the function of a gene. Shared mutations between kinds should only occur rarely, if at all. Hypothesis 2. All animals, including humans, are related by common descent. Prediction for Hypothesis 2. Gulop should follow the same specific nested hierarchical pattern of similarity and difference that is seen in functional genes and physical traits. Now the test. Biologists Yuriko Ota and Morimitsu Nishikimi sequenced a chain of 164 nucleotides from exon 10 of l gulonolactone oxidase pseudogene in five species, rat, human, chimpanzee, orangutan, and macaque. This gene region is a coding region in those animals that are able to produce l gulonolactone oxidase. So in working versions of the gene, this sequence, along with a few others, indicates which amino acids go in which order. This chain of amino acids is folded on itself to make a protein, in this case the enzyme l gulonolactone oxidase. The gene sequences for the five species were then lined up with each other and the differences were observed. Let's take a look. In A of this figure, you have the DNA lined up. 
and in B you have the amino acid sequences, coded for by the same DNA in A. B is one-third the length of A because every three nucleotides from A code for one amino acid in B. All the dashes are cases where there is no difference between that sequence and the rat sequence. In A, the asterisks indicate a deletion of that letter. In B, the asterisk is a case where a stop codon is coded for by the DNA. A stop codon ends the amino acid chain. The question marks correspond with the deletion in A. All the letters, other than the one in the rat sequence, are cases where that sequence is different than the rat sequence. As you can see, most of the code is the same for all five sequences. Only 39 of the 164 nucleotides are different in any of the primates when compared with the rat, despite being non-functional in these primates, but functional in the rat. That is, rats can make their own vitamin C using this gene, but primates can't. Let's look at the pattern emerging. 19 nucleotides are shared by all the primates, but not with the rat. Two more link all the apes. Five more link humans with chimps. Two differences from the other four are found in each of humans, chimps, and orangutans, and seven in macaques. Uh, now that we have the data, let's compare the data with our predictions. Prediction one is that we will see an independent set of mutations in each kind when compared to the functional rat version. Thus we have 27 mutations leading to the human gene, 27 leading to chimps, 22 to orangutan, and 25 for macaque for a total of 101 mutations. Prediction two is that we will see a nested hierarchy of similarity that matches the tree of life pattern from other sources. Like this. The total number of independent mutations on this tree is 38 compared to 101 if the hypothesis 1 is true. That's zero duplicate mutations out of 101 total differences from the functional rat gene compared with 63 mut duplicate mutations if hypothesis 2 is true. We can do the same thing with the amino acid sequence, but for the sake of brevity, I'll just leave that up to you if, if you want to try it. By the way, any gene will give you exactly the same pattern seen here, and other experiments have compared other segments of Gulop, which show the same pattern of mutations. Um, any of these genes can be found on GenBank online for free. So feel free to try it yourself. So uh, using Occam's razor in the laws of probability, prediction 2 is a much better fit than prediction 1. Therefore, we reject hypothesis 1 and accept hypothesis 2. This is the scientific method, by the way. Even if we ignore the 18 differences between rats and all the primates, common descent still explains the data better. To add another level to the story, it was discovered that guinea pigs will develop scurvy when fed a diet without vitamin C. It was later discovered that guinea pigs have mutations in the same gene, knocking out the same enzyme, thus they cannot produce vitamin C. However, and here's the kicker, guinea pigs have a different set of mutations knocking out the gene than primates do. Oh, and a breed of rats that is prone to scurvy? has a different single mutation in this gene that changes an amino acid, thus preventing vitamin C production through a different set of mutations than either primates or guinea pigs. Some creationists have actually claimed that since some of the same pieces are missing in both primates and guinea pigs, that this is evidence of common design. Though some of the same sequences are deleted, there are more deleted from the primate sequence, and these are shared by monkeys, apes, and humans, but not guinea pigs. As you can see in this figure, the primates are missing the coding regions 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, and 11, while guinea pigs are only missing 1 and 5. In guinea pigs, the sections deleted begin and end at different places than in the primates, indicating separate mutational events. We expect deletions to occur in non-functional genes given enough time because of the small expense in copying them. Additionally, you can see that the primate sequence contains a lot more non-coding DNA, including some large insertions called lines, marked here with gray bars. I've even seen it claimed that since primates have longer generation times and thus slower mutation rates, that this can somehow explain the pattern of similarity observed in primates. Well, it can't. If the degree of divergence was correlated with generation length, then we would expect the primate gulop to be less different from the rats than the guinea pig one, not more different from rats as we observe. Also, we wouldn't expect the pattern to perfectly match the tree of life as it does if there were just a matter of how quickly they mutate. Did the primates all somehow slowly build up a huge number of the exact same mutational differences from a working version of the gene while guinea pigs quickly built up a different, smaller set? If anyone could explain how a hypothesis of separate creation of kinds could explain the pattern we see in this known non-functional gene, I'd sure like to hear it. I can't imagine that God would plant this evidence there just to trick us when he could have made the pattern of a non-functional gene anything he wished. Stuff like this is why even Michael Behe accepts common descent. 
I'm not trying to turn anyone away from their faith, but the Genesis account cannot be taken literally by any rational person who has closely examined the evidence, and not just from biology. If your belief in God rests solely on the six days young earth Genesis story being literally true, then I truly feel sorry for you. Common descent is a reality. It is unintentional that when scientists study reality objectively, it sometimes conflicts with what some people believe. But the truth is important. Peace.